of you that are still following your New Year's resolution, first off, good job. Keep it up. But <laughs> secondly, if you know you're kind of lenient like I am and your goal was to have just mm -hmm. no trans fats, right, and to cut down on the sugar and eliminate artificial colors from your diet, but you still want to satisfy your sweet tooth, we may have a place for you. Well, it's a bakery in Gross Point Park on Kerchival. It only serves up food that the owner says you would be proud to serve your family. Mm -hmm. Michelle Oliver takes us on a Dine in the D experience to Cornwall Bakery. Hi, my name is Freeman Gunnell. I'm the owner of Cornwall Bakery in Gross Point Park, Michigan. I've always had an affinity towards working in kitchens and working with food. And as I started to go further along in my career, uh, I found I had a little bit of a, a more of a knack to do pastries and breads. Over the years, Freeman worked in several kitchens under some amazing chefs like Wolfgang Puck, but he wanted to get out of the kitchen. Having a family is important to me, and, and if I didn't have my family, I might be you know, working around the clock, but now it's, it's like you want to take time to be with your family and see them grow up. Uh, I thought for me, a career in bakery would be a little bit better than just in a restaurant. So he opened Cornwall Bakery. And I wanted something that didn't define us as specific to who we should be. We don't want to take over one thing or another. We just want to be able to dabble in certain things and provide a little bit of everything. And he does mean everything. From soups to cakes to bread, he does it all. And he does it his way, meaning he serves items he would be proud to serve his family. If let's say I'm making something that I can't stand behind, I don't eat, then it's hard for me to sell it. Uh, I want to have to where I really think that this is the best product for people to eat and, and that I eat it and that they can eat it as well. He tries to use no artificial colors and is almost completely trans fat free. Plus, he likes to use less sugar than most bakeries. The sweeter the better is not, not, our, um, not our policy because uh, we don't want to have it where you can taste the sugar dripping off your teeth. We, we would like it if you could just taste the full effect of the cake or the bread or whatever the item might be. So we, we use a lot of scratch items because that way we can control how much sugar, how much fat, how much salt goes into the product. Well, since they're big on getting hands-on, I thought I would get hands-on and help them make some croissants. The dough was already mixing, so we took it out and rolled it out. Once rolled out, it's time to fold in the butter. You're going to take butter and you're going to line it up to where we're right about, I'll mark it off. Thank you. Right today. All right, so just lie it out like how you did? Yep. Sticky. Then we're going to fold this into here. Hence the folding term. Yes. Now the other part will go that way. Okay. So that part's you. So lift. All right. So now this is what's considered the lock in or the roll in. That means we rolled it out and folded it again and again. Pretend like you're kneading someone's, uh, you know, a body massage kind of thing. You're gonna press down really hard, like you're really trying to oh, work out like the. Like you're really working out those knots. Yes, working out the <laughs> knots. There you go. And again. After that, we let it rest for a bit. Then it was time to roll them into their recognizable crescent shape. This is where I feel like I might be an expert at it because this was my job when I was a kid with my mom. Was oh. Rolling the little well, crescent roll. We're gonna take the dough okay. and fold it from the back part all the way up to the front. And then you just roll it around? Yeah, and then you pinch it. There's my croissant. Then they're ready for the oven and they come out like this. Flaky and delicious. Oh, this is a morning of getting hungry with us in studio. A Freeman Gunnell, who's owner, chef at the Cornwall Bakery. It's good to see you, chef. Great Thank to you. Meet you. And so between, thank you. We should just here. say right off the bat, this very one is the one that Michelle Actually, made. This one? The whole wheat one, yes. Okay. This one right here. Yes. So this, good job, Michelle. Well I'll done. Look at that. She did kind of know what she's up to. Yeah. So you want to give us some tips this morning on frosting, right? Frosting and baking cakes. Okay. So, right. um, traditionally, we were taught, or in some houses, that you'd bake the cake and then you'd put it on a, a rack like this to let it cool. Mm -hmm. Right. So what happens is you just pop the cake out and you put it uh, on the rack to cool and what happens is the cake dries out. Mm. So we want to avoid that. So okay. in order to avoid that, we're going to we're going to remove the rack. So even though it seems maybe And so you're letting it cool on a piece of uh, parchment paper? or wax paper? Right, on parchment paper. We're going to flip the cake over right when it comes out of the oven mm -hmm. onto parchment paper and let it sit this way. Okay. And by doing that, it kind of flattens out the cake and makes oh. it um, more level. And, and 
decreases that And then you don't get the crown. weird lines, too. Right, so the crown kind of disappears. Okay. So then, for icing the cake, mm -hmm. we're going to change it up a little bit here. Instead of icing the cake um, hot out of the oven, just cooled, right. we'll pop it in the freezer or in the refrigerator. So you're cutting the crescent off so it's flatter? Yes. Is ah, that then, okay. Yeah. So then we can we're save that do, for all of us that like to exactly. eat snacks. Uh, exactly. I was thinking mm -hmm. the same thing. So then the other part we're going to do is uh, we're going to cut the other one the same. Oh. And then we're going to stack them together to where the, um, the bottom becomes the top. Uh -huh. And the other bottom is the other bottom, so it's like this. I see. Very and it's nice. much more uniform to ice. So we want a cake that, that has nice straight edges to ice okay. and makes it a lot easier to work with. Very so, nice. Sounds good. Um, so I already we... cut yours All and right. I set yours, and yours still has to be set. And okay. We're going to use whipped cream today because if we use whipped cream, we know that we can uh, Do I use one smooth of these? it around a lot easier. Yeah, this is called an offset spatula, and this is a regular spatula. Is there a difference? Well, it, this one's a lot easier to control. Oh, give that one to Tati. Oh, yeah. That one's a little cut. I know mine. Oh, she's got she's her. Got her own too. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to smooth this around. I'm yeah. going to start frosting my okay. cake, too. And, and make that level. Okay. Now Oops, I've got on my hand, Tati. Yes. Oh, no. Uh, mm. Tell me what you want me to do. Oh, sorry. And now you're going to put some in the middle. Okay. I want to make sure I was doing the right thing. Yeah. All right. Okay. And we're going to so do the top first, mm -hmm. and then we're going to ice the sides. How am I doing, Chef? You're doing great. I'm doing great. You're, you're grading on a curve, but I appreciate it. Ready? So there you go. So the yep. next one comes on, right? Yep. There you go. Now, and so we've got the flat on the top. Yep. And so you're caught up with Tati. Okay. And stay on the top. Okay. Now so what you can do okay, go ahead. is you can spin. Yes, exactly. So you're doing it without me showing you. So you, you spin the top and hold the, hold the spatula in the middle. Mm-hmm. Like so. Oh, this is like spinning records in the old yes. days. There you go. And then you're going to take some whipped cream and put it on the sides mm -hmm. to ice the sides. And okay. that will give you a, a much better... So what else do you sell at the bakery while we're going through this? We have bagels on Fridays. Uh -huh. We have baguettes every day. We have breads, focaccia, sourdough. The sourdough um, is spectacular. I just would like the record to reflect. A sourdough yeah. rye. Amazing. Uh, traditionally made Very cheesecakes, nice. coffee cakes. Uh, Croissants, brownies, magic mm -hmm. bars, cookies. The kids love the cookies. So let me tell you two things I've learned that are significant. I don't. I've never, and I've been. I've been in the kitchen a lot, being an assistant. I'm not the perfect, you know, starter guy. Okay. I've never cut the top off, the rounded edge. That's a perfect tip. And having a lazy Susan like deal here. Yes, the lazy yes. Susan wow. works well. Yes, makes it much easier. Right. And yeah. you know, just patience it works really well. Don't don't all think right. that you have to do everything all at once. What we can also do is a, called a crumb coat. Yeah, you I was could, just going to say that. Do you do a crumb coat? Sometimes you do. Okay. Uh, it just depends on the situation. If you crumb coat, then you um, use a small amount of buttercream. Oh. Mm -hmm. You lock in all the crumbs. Yep. You set it in the refrigerator for like five minutes. You bring it out and you put another coat on. So then you don't have crumbs mixed Very in. Very good. It's perfect. Oh. Thank so you so much. So if you'd like much. to uh, well. taste Thank some you. of the delectable treats yourself, you can visit Cornwall Bakery in Gross Point Park. Downtown on Kirchival. You will oh, come on. not be disappointed. Trust me. Thank yeah. you for being here.